Hello and welcome to this devotion. As a church, we've been looking at Psalm 139 and I'm going to be continuing on through that. So we're picking up from verse 17 where Connor left off and we'll be going through till the end of Psalm 139. Uh, I want to split this down into three different uh, sort of subsections of this part of the passage. Um, and we're going to look a little bit at that and unpack it a little bit. Uh, so this first section, 17 and 18, it says, How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! That is a great encouragement, I think. Something for us to focus on in our walk, in our journey with God, is the things that he thinks about us. You know, we read throughout all of scripture how much God loves us and cherishes us. And here I think it's a really, really uh, valuable point to take away is that it outnumbers the grains of sand. And for us living on the coast um, what a great reminder that whenever we go for a walk along the beach, you know, we look at the grains of sand and think, God loves me and has more good things to say about me than there are grains of sand. What a, uh, a great way to you know, unpack and look at this to begin with. But then we go to verse 19 through to 22, and there's a very, very different atmosphere painted in this part of the scripture. And it's very easy to leave out. Um, but it says, if only you would slay the wicked, O God, away from me, you bloodthirsty men. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord, and abhor those who rise up against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. Now, if we look at this in context, uh, Israel would have had literal enemies. They would have had people they were at war with, um, rival nations. And I think this is really important to remember when we read this, because otherwise we can look at it and think that's a bit offensive. Let's just skip over that and not, not take that in. But I think f from that, for me, what is important is to remember that as humans, we have emotions and sometimes those emotions can take over and we are prone to have evil thoughts and we are prone to say not so good things about other people. But actually, the important thing here is the want to challenge that that challenges God. Not that God isn't big enough to deal with those things but it's to step up as his church, as his bride, to take on that challenge and to, yeah, challenge back. Actually, this is something that is not right. This is something that is wrong. And as the church of God, we're going to challenge that. We're going to stand up to the injustices in the world. Something really important to remember. But actually, another really important thing to remember with this as well um, I think he summed up really well in Ephesians 6, uh, verse 12. And it says, Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Because it's really easy to read from 19 to 22 and think these enemies if in our context today, how do we look at that? That will be people, but actually it's looking past that because God loves all of us. God loves every single person you will ever meet. So it's digging deeper and actually standing up to the injustice and standing up against those evil spiritual forces. And that's something really important to take away from that. And then verse 23 to 24, it says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. I think this flows really well from 
what David was saying before about the, you know, slaying the wicked, get away from me, you bloodthirsty men, and calling them his enemies, is that he is vulnerable enough to say, if I'm wrong, God, search my heart. Know that I love you. Know that I want to do what you want me to. And see if there is any offensive way in me. And if there is, lead me to change. That is a really vulnerable place to put yourself, is, is to give permission for God to change you, to change your heart, to change your ways, to change your words, to change your actions. What a vulnerable state to be in with God. And what a place that we should also aim to, to be in, to be vulnerable with God and to ask God to change us, to help bring change to this hurting world. That concludes our uh, look through of Psalm 139. I hope you've enjoyed it. And join us on Monday for a brand new um, devotional series on life stories. See you then.